I um, I got I nearly uh, died in in and around the Holmes Chapel area last summer. Do you remember back end of last summer, last August, when we had the the uh, floods and the torrential rain? Yeah, I, I was driving down to um, Portsmouth to get a ferry, and uh, I for some reason my sat nav instead of taking me um, straight up to the M6. Took yeah. me through, took me through like Holmes Chapel and everything, and I had to drive through numerous flooded roads, and it was the most terrifying. At two o'clock in the morning, it was the most terrifying experience of my life. Nasty. Yeah. I won't, I won't hold it against you though. <laughs> it would seem like extreme. <laughs> sort of, def- definitely a good way to get a podcast, you know, kicked off by talking yeah. about your mortality. <laughs> Good, good, good comedy bants. Yeah. Uh, speaking of good comedy bants, mm-hmm. let's do a podcast. Oh, that was sick. Good evening and welcome to Frunk Unwrapped, the official podcast of Food Review UK. My name is Nate Peterson and we are going to dunk your ears in the coffee cup of conversation as we tackle biscuits, biscuits. But first, given our first host's lack of hair, you might expect me to make a Gary Baldy joke, but I'm just not that guy. It's Stuart Bullock. Um, literally, we've already, prior to the podcast recording, we... we we established that you have got less hair than I have. Oh, prove it. I've got I've got a hair island. Mm-hmm. You yeah. you have no hair island. Yeah, I have I have a lonely island. Yeah. You only oh. and in fact your chest hair is only in the form of a small island, whereas I am quite luxuriously <laughs> quite luxuriously uh upholstered. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm enjoying this new theme of ours, which, which is to, to bring up shit onto the show that um, we've talked about off show. Last week pens, this week hair. Yeah, that's what you guys out there can tune into next next time. For anyone um, who is I, wondering, I am I'm using a different but still quite a luxurious pen. Yeah. What's this pen, Stuart? This is me. This is my Honda branded pen. Oh, uh, yeah. this it's, is it's it's a similarly. Luxury pen brand. It's cross. It's a cross. Welcome to the uh, the pen podcast. It's a cross pen, uh, but it was a free gift from uh, a Honda sales rep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> free a free gift. <laughs> a free gift. Yeah. It was a tool of persuasion. It was a t- yeah. Yes, I'll buy this expensive car if you give me an expensive pen. Yes. You only asked for one pen. You oh, I dropped the ball there. I, I got a. Uh, I'm sure. Oh, and I got some. Uh, got some mats as well. Got some foot mats. My friend got married to a Honda recently. Actually, well, I say married. It was a civic ceremony. He puts the jet. Oh, this is poorly timed. He puts the jest in digestive, the ball in bourbon, and the knob in hobnob. It's Michael Jameson. Crumbs. Those were good puns. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hi there. Hi. I wonder if anyone's still listening. Good um, to be here. Good to be here. Thank you. How? How? Are you, what's your hair situation? Uh, it's it's archaic. Uh, I'm putting a lot less product in it. Um, long, it's long. Um, that's inferred from archaic. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's bad, obviously. Any any temptation to shave it completely off? No, 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 no. I don't think I'd look good like that. Looking at you two. Mm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I thought we were on objectively bad for a second there. Brilliant. No, uh, no, I don't think it would suit me like it does you guys. If you've read some of the reviews of the show, then you might be right. And finally, despite the fact that this is the first time we're talking, our guest is a man who's incredibly important to me. As the founder of Man V Fat, his programme helped me change my life. Not so much in the last few weeks, but we won't talk about that. Um, since then, he has moved on to other things and has written the wonderful before and after his first uh, fiction, I believe. Uh, please welcome to the show, Andrew Shan Shanahan. Good evening. Hello. How are you? I'm very good, Shan. How are you? I know I'm not on video, but I will point out that I'm also bald as a coot as well. <laughs> Yours looks more like choice, though, when I've seen your picture. It looks like you, you, you're you one of the cool and trendy bald people. The, the people that make me and Stuart feel bad about ourselves. That's kind, but entirely inaccurate. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much for coming on the show. Very kind of you. Thanks for having me. Um, like I say, as, as I put in the introduction there... 
I have to, first of all, thank you very much for the, uh, the fine work that you did in setting up um, Man V Fat, which has helped me lose a ton of weight and, and, and many, many men across the nation. Um, you must be incredibly proud of the fine work done by that, um, by that system and how it's given a lifeline to so many people. Let, let's just clarify first. Is it actually a ton of weight that you've lost? <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I was quite big. I, I, I haven't done the maths recently. What with yeah. you know being off, but it could it could be a ton. It, it could literally be a ton at this point. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's very kind of you to say. Anyway, um, but yeah, I, I'm always a little bit resilient towards that sort of um, that people saying nice things about that because I think that there there's this sort of tendency amongst blokes when they've lost weight, or amongst anyone really when they've lost weight, to to kind of put that praise onto a system you know to say oh i lost weight with joe wicks or i lost weight with uh, weight watchers or man be fat and i think that in many ways i think it's it's a psychological trait of people who struggle with their weight around the fact that they don't kind of take credit for for what they're doing themselves and they attribute their success to an external factor rather than it being you know something that you did you, you're the one who stopped putting biscuits in your mouth, not me. Um, you know, yeah, okay, so the system uh, is good and it works and it provides cooperation and it provides community around that for men. But equally, you were the one who did all the hard work. So I, I return, I rebuff your compliments and pass it back onto you and say, well done. You fell straight into my trap, which was <laughs> to uh, get a compliment. No, um, I totally understand what you're saying, um, and I certainly don't think you're wrong, but I think there are plenty of people. I've, I've been overweight um, you know, pretty much all of my life, certainly all of my adult life, and I've tried various things across, across the many years and never found any that have stuck anywhere near um, as comprehensive as, as this has. So, you know, in, in that sense... It might be right, right thing at the right time. I don't know, but equally, it's something that's worked for me, and therefore, it's it's just an alternative outlet for people like me who, you know, Slimming World on its own maybe wouldn't have worked, or Weight Watchers, or whatever other things I've tried wouldn't have worked. Whereas this has not only stuck for a long time; um, it, it, it's 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 actually worked comprehensively. So, I think that's you know, had had you not uh founded man be fat you know I, I could still be the way i was because i just wouldn't have found something that that, that clicked with me i think it's, i think it's a big cocktail of things um for a lot of us so um i'm certainly not suggesting it's it's purely man be fat because i appreciate it is my own resilience in there as well but um yeah. it's uh yeah no i i like i say very um i think it's a great system and it just gives an outlet to people that maybe men are, men are notorious at not talking about their their weight and their feelings and all that sort of stuff. And I think it's um, it, it yeah. gives an outlet for that. So, but then I think you'll you'll probably be aware of this more than anyone really, Nate, about the fact that the you know when when you actually go onto any of the leagues or any of the groups, men are notorious. Well, I think there's this perception that men don't talk about things and won't talk about feelings. But in most of the leagues, you can't get the buggers to shut up. Um, <laughs> You know, when we do actually get talking and when we're given a platform and a, a sort of a, I hate to use the word safe space because it's a shit term, but it's, you know, that, that sort of sense of this is a place where you can come together and talk. Um, pe yeah, you can't shut blokes up. Mm. I think that's the thing it is, the, it is the safe space, as you um, lovingly put it, because I think the reason a lot of men don't talk about their weight is, is because a lot of other men who aren't so worried about their weight might mock them, take the piss and then you feel bad and it's all the vicious circle whereas this does give people the opportunity to say hang on a minute this isn't why um this isn't what i want to be in life so yeah um yeah it's 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 and it's geared towards solely men as well and i think that that helps is is everything else doesn't necessarily have that that male spin and i know it's probably very politically un incorrect these day and age to to have that but at the same time i think it, it, it helps in something like this which maybe has been missed i think we need a bit of help every now and again I think that you know, if I am um, to to receive credit for anything, I think it's the fact that initially it was the fact that I desperately needed and probably still desperately need that you know man v fat to exist, and also I'm utterly shameless when it comes to asking for help, to talking about problems, and just waffling on generally, which is why I'm sure by the end of this podcast you'll probably want to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, it won't take that long. Um, 
<laughs> uh, moving on, um, I also mentioned in the, in the introduction uh, before and after. Um, that's your. I'm right in saying that's your first fiction fictional book. It is, yeah. So I've written three non-fiction books, including the Man B Fat Weight Loss Manual and and uh, other books. And this is my first crack at fiction. Um, to say that it is perfectly timed is <laughs> underselling it somewhat. So. Uh, tell the listeners what Before and After um, is about and where you got the inspiration. So uh, as I was doing Man V Fat, I, one of the things that... So my background is I'm a journalist and have spent two plus decades talking and writing about things that interest me, men's health, food, um, all sorts of things, really. And when... I was doing Man V Fat, one of the things that I really enjoyed doing was was interviewing guys who had lost a lot of weight. And occasionally that led me to talking to some guys who had had real, really significant mental health problems around their weight loss and just around life generally. And they were always really fascinating conversations. And some of these guys were what is colloquially known as shut-ins. So they didn't leave the flat house just sort of stayed in and because of the way modern life is set up they just had food and everything delivered to them and kind of manipulated family members to to get them all the calories that they wanted for the day and um it just struck me that it was such a it seemed like a very modern crisis because clearly prior to food delivery services existing you wouldn't have been able to to live in that way. You would have just died, essentially, unless you could sort of, you know, twist the missus's arm to go and get your food and that sort of thing. But it, it was really, um, I spoke to probably about seven or eight of these guys who had lived in this way. And it, it just stuck with me as uh, the basis of something dramatic. And again, you know, something that just hadn't existed as a, an issue or as a situation before. And, and my kind of tastes from a fiction point of view tend towards science fiction and post-apocalyptic stuff and just like, you know, general disasters. And so I thought, well, what would happen to a guy who was a shut-in who, you know, while the world ended? And so that's where Ben came into existence. Ben Stone's the character in, in Before and After. He weighs 601 pounds and is a shut-in, hasn't been outside his flat for nine years. And on the day that the book starts, the council have just come along to take the front wall of his flat off so that they can crane him, hoist him by crane out to an ambulance so he can go and have his leg amputated because diabetes has uh, progressed to the point where that's a necessity. And just as he's all wrapped up and and ready to go into the hoist, the world ends. And that's where the story begins. So he's he's kind of trapped from the very beginning. He's trapped in the, the uh, hoist that he's in for the crane. He's trapped in the flat because outside there's a sort of um, a pandemic of sorts. And basically he's, he's shut in. Like many of us feel at the moment, he is isolated from the world. Um, the biggest problem for him, though, is that he has no food in the flat because he'd just run the cupboards down before because he knew he was going into hospital for a bit. Um, and so he effectively starves while he's he's in his flat. And as you say, it feels... Someone accused me the other day of it being a viral marketing campaign, <laughs> um, which seems... <laughs> pretty quite, quite literally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So it's it's been a very interesting time. At times when I've been kind of doing marketing and talking about it, I have thought, at what point does this become bad taste for me to sort mm. of, you know, to because uh, I certainly, you know, people are dying, and yeah. uh, you wouldn't want to, you know, promote this easy entertainment on the back of people's no. deaths. But at the same time, you know, it is actually probably an interesting book to read at this point because it's about the psychological impacts of of self-isolation it's about why people take themselves away from other people and also in in large part which is why it's interesting speaking to you guys it's it's about how ben had kind of isolated before he needed to mm -hmm. through using food to to keep people away from him 
Um, and you know, certainly that's something that I'm I'm guilty of, of is using food not in the um, way that it was intended to be as a as a joy and as as something nutritional. Um, you know, I eat through all sorts of reasons, from boredom to anger to uh, just sheer stupidity. And that I think is is a things that are explored in the book. He's um, Ben's quite a, a an interesting character because he. he from an outsider's point of view it's it's quite sad obviously seeing how he got to the point that he he got you know, to the start of the book essentially sure. um but he he seems relatively he seems happy in himself um although by the end of the book obviously without wanting to spoil too much obviously you, you feel that his his mindset has changed which is probably resonates for a lot of people like myself who have you know lost weight and i was very much not to put myself into the same category as as, as him you know he's yeah. 600 pounds but equally you know once you've lost that weight and you think oh god why didn't i do that sooner and this is such an achievement and maybe i wasn't as happy as i thought it was and, and things like that so um you sort of get quite a a big range of emotions and, and it's quite easy to just to expect that Ben at, at 600 pound shut in would be a specific type of character. And actually he's not, um, he has, he has a, a level of confidence in certain areas. Um, and yeah, he's quite, like I said, I think he's quite an interesting character. I think you've done a decent job with not making him just completely sympathetic. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean that again, I mean, it's, it's in tribute to the, the guys that I spoke to that, and, and interviewed and, and spoke to several times and some of them, you know, have become friends that they are, they are three dimensional people themselves. And I felt yeah. that it was important that Ben, you know, you saw warts and all, but through seeing the, the warts in his life, you actually came to understand him a bit more and like him hopefully a bit more. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, again, just going back to the the weird pandemic situation that we're all in, I think something that we're all going through at the moment is this process that everyone has to go through, which is is to decide and understand where you find hope in your own life. And I think that, you know, that's very much what the book is about for me, is about someone who is forced into a period of reassessing what they've done with their lives and trying to understand where their happiness is and why you know what what is the fount of their happiness and in the book you know there's there's lots of different roots and and wellsprings of happiness that ben goes to but then i I think that that's true for all of us you know that it's where do we find our happiness and and that really is i think as we go through this process of of being locked in to our own homes it's i'm sure there's lots of people who are struggling with relationships and who are and conversely people who are relishing the relationships that are around them who perhaps have been I was speaking to a mate who was saying you know he'd been working solidly for the last you know 15 20 years and didn't feel like he really knew his daughter and I think he had been worried in many ways about what it would be like to you know if he actually spent some time at home with her what happens if she hated him? What happens if he wasn't a good dad? And I think that's, but, you know, conversely, what he's found is that it's been a real joy. And now he's looking at, well, I don't want to go back to work. <laughs> like, mm. You know, I, I, I like what I'm doing at home and it's fun and it's, it's you know, this is, it's really freed people up. And I think it's just a fascinating time that we're living through for all sorts of reasons. But, yeah, I, th- I think... Um, I do hope people don't think I'm cashing in <laughs> on millions of deaths around the world. No, I mean, uh, I, I, I've been fortunate enough to be one of the earliest people that that, that you gave the opportunity of, of reading the book, and um, mm. and uh, I can certainly say, you know, it was out there before anything serious happened in terms of the pandemic, and obviously, the, the, whilst whilst there are similarities with the book, obviously, that it's 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 different enough that it's certainly not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a, a, a full cash in, but I can understand why some people certainly might 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 think it's it's potentially. Uh, it's, um, it's all right. I know that it's not really. Up. I can't. Yeah. Be, I can't be that prescient. Our family had a beta max. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, equally, that that would be like expecting you know, uh, whenever there's any sort type of tragedy, any any type of book out there that has a similar yeah. subject just to be pulled off the shelves and whatnot. So yeah, it's, yeah, it, totally. it, it just doesn't it just doesn't work that way. Um, 
something that you picked up on there is 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 Ben's sort of outlets and his his, his uh, inspiration of joy and all that sort of stuff. Um, the cover of the book is a bourbon biscuit. Very <laughs> relevant to what? Very relevant to why we're going to be talking tonight. Um, obviously, it's quite an important item to him. How many other uh, sweet treats did you consider before ending up with the humble bourbon? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, none is the truth. Uh, <laughs> but but subsequently, it has made me realise that uh, you, you probably know uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, that they did the um, the Cornetto trilogy, uh, which, uh, gone and what was the Cornetto trilogy, which films are in it? Sean, uh, of, the Sean of the Dead, Hot, Hot Fuzz, Fuzz and End of the World. End of the world. There you go. Uh, what's End of the World like? I've never actually watched it. Poor. The weakest of the three. Like, yeah. Consider, yeah. Considering the, the first two was set such a high bar, the End of the World is like a... It's an okay... It's mm. a very okay, silly sci-fi horror. But the first two are so good and so yeah. well... So just well pitched. I, I think yeah. the problem with End of the World is they mess with the dynamic too much. They, they flip the script with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. Sun she... Peg is the stra- who plays a, a really good uh, straight man, and Nick Frost is is the silly man. And with the third one, they've decided to swip it up, uh, yeah. switch it over so that Nick Frost is the straight man. And some, while Sun Peg can do the funny man side of it, I just don't think it has the right dynamic. No, no, yeah, no. no. yeah. It, I, it's one of those films where, like, obviously I've I've seen the first two, but it's um, I was just put off by the relentless slagging that it got. Yeah. And normally I'm a bit more. Uh, independent than that but i just i couldn't like psych myself up to go and watch it after it got a uh, absolute radishing um so anyway so the, the to return to the question the bourbon was there and it was always a bourbon and it was never considered to be anything else but then i thought maybe i should write a trilogy and just have different biscuits on the front <laughs> of each one 100 percent. yeah because the pink wafer is really a beautiful yeah it's, yeah. it's uh you know it's iconic and then but do you go custard cream or do you go for a rounder biscuit? I think you go jam. jam. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I would I would lose the pink wafer and go custard cream and jammy dodger. Bourbon That's custard cream jammy dodger. That's your, your holy trilogy of British biscuits, surely. But then pink wafer really, you know, from a, an artistic point of view, it it as, a, as a, an iconic and yeah. or, you know, as a, a, a figurative item, I, um, your, your pink wafer says all sorts of things sexuality gender <laughs> you know my, we, we could we could discourse at length my only you, issue with the pink wafer from a design point of view is i think you need to show it in an isometric view because from just a, a top down the bourbon is iconic the custard cream is iconic um the the jammy dodger is iconic the pink the pink wafer <laughs> you need you need the isometric view so you get the the waffly top but then you also get the layered sides which i think i think ruins the dynamic of your cover I, I think you've made an excellent point. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm just, I'm just stunned that Shan doesn't think that custard cream represents sexuality. I think that's, that's blown my mind. I'm very sexual. Vanilla. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, that was actually that that leads on to a question I was going to say. I mean, how did you find writing fiction? Um, and and you know, has it given you hankerings to do more? Yeah, hundred percent. It, it was. Um, arguably the most enjoyable piece of work that I've ever done F- from, you know, I, regardless of what anyone else thinks of it, I loved doing it and I'm very proud of, of what it is, um, which is really unusual for me because I'm usually the first to slag myself off and like be aware of the failings of something. And, and it, by no means am I saying that before and after is perfect, but it kind of really did um, hit the the targets for what I wanted to do and you know the the reception that it's had afterwards pleasingly has been exceptionally nice um but I was you know I'm I'm one of those people that if, if I thought something was good I could stick something out and it could get booted 10 which ways but I would I, I wouldn't really care because I would think it was good um so yeah I, I'm 100% this this is what I do for a living now I'm I'm a novelist I'm a novelist. In fact, could you redo the intro? <laughs> <laughs> uh, St- uh, Stuart does the editing, so I'll, I'll let him edit this in. <laughs> Please welcome novelist Andrew Shan Shanahan. Um, well, uh, listen, uh, I'm going to wrap it up, up there with the book, but I, um, I, I, I raced through it. It was 
I'm not just saying this because you're on there. I, I found it a really fun read, a really easy read. Uh, uh, obviously, it, it resonates with someone like me somewhat. But I do think even if you've not struggled with with weight um, or you're not on that 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 path, I, th- I think there's definitely something there to be to be had. It's a great little science science fiction book, um, and, and it's written in such an interesting way. It's got some some interesting sort of storytelling mechanisms um and i just found it yeah like, like i said a, a fun little book and uh, i i really do implore everyone um listening who's into this sort of thing please go and read it because it's um yeah it's good good fun absolutely good fun awesome thanks very much and obviously if people go and read it then it further cements my my uh yeah, insistence that i'm a novelist <laughs> absolutely which we've got which we definitely 100 percent have in the introduction now <laughs> Nate here. If you're like me and have a dangerous amount of disposable income that you can't be trusted with, why not head on over to patreon.com and give some of it to your favourite food review channel and podcast provider. And while you're there, why not give us some money? Whee! Nah, but seriously, patreon.com forward slash food review UK. Help us get Gossie some new glasses or something. He looks ridiculous. Um... As I uh, warned you, I don't know if you've listened to the show before, Shan, but uh, as I warned you, pre, pre, sorry, regularly, regularly, a, f- yeah. a, f- a full-time listener. Um, what we do, yeah, <laughs> well, it is regular. Yeah. Um, we do um, something called random questions. I've got ten food-related random questions. If you can please give me three numbers between one and ten, and I shall ask you those questions. Okay, I'm going to go ten, nine, and eight. Oh, backwards, oh. cheeky. Uh, ten, are you allergic to any foods? Bourbons, probably. Um, is leaf mould a food? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I defer to my learned um, hosts. Leaf mould. MJ, Stuart? Uh, it, isn't leaf mould just something you get in the garden? Yeah, I just, just I didn't know whether there were there there are some. Do you, do you have a legitimate allergy to leaf mold? Yeah. Oh, wow! And I forget every year where it comes into sort of August September time. I'm going. Why am I so wheezy and like sneezing all the time? And then after about two months, I go. Oh yeah, I'm allergic to leaf mold and start taking Benadryl again, and I'm fine. Is that when you smell the sweaty plants? Is that what that is? <laughs> no, it's when like all the leaves fall off the trees and start mouldering. Oh. I've I've googled uh, leaf mould food and it's come up with images of like um, c- cookie moulds in the shape of leaves. So I suspect <laughs> the answer is no, it's not food. I didn't know if there was some sort of strange cultures where it would be a prized <sighs> probably nutrition. Me- probably. Me- Mexico, probably. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the, the, the corn the, the corn herpes is corn, disgusting. Corn herpes, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, this year. Yeah. Uh, question nine: Would you rather eat in a restaurant on your own or on a table full of annoying strangers, like Wagamama style? <laughs> <laughs> are, are you suggesting that all wham, Wagamama's uh, customers yeah. are annoying? Um, well, yeah, I, I, to be honest, I, I absolutely hate being watched when I'm eating. Like, I, I honestly think that there's a market for a restaurant. You know the one that was done in the dark? Yeah. Where the, the entire restaurant was pitch black. I, I would be well up for every restaurant being like that. <laughs> or you, you get a box put on your head and, you, you know, that's that's it. And the food's just sort of pushed in through a flap on the front of your head. <laughs> and then you can leave and no one has seen you. I mean, f- eating is a, a moment of vulnerability. It's not a, a time to be sort of watching other people. It really ruins the experience for me. I'm, and I'm, I was previously a restaurant critic as well. So oh, wow. I have plenty of experience of eating on my own. Yeah, I love it. I'd rather eat on my own. Yeah. I think I think that's my most popular answer. Um, I might take that question now because it's it's getting a bit repetitive. Um, and finally, eight food heaven or I'm going to say and food heaven and food hell. Um, what's what's your what's your big yay yeah, yay yeah, and no no? As in what? Um... If you could only eat, so for food heaven, if you could only eat, say eat this one food for the rest of your life, 
um, yeah. and, and food hell if you you know absolutely just could cast it into hell so it would never see the light of day um well this is going to be a, a fairly uncontroversial food having cheese i think oh. is you know Swiss. especially the the bluer the older the the ranker the closer to leaf mold the better <laughs> weird living, <laughs> living dangerously yeah exactly yeah if it's not like causing me to wheeze and bringing me out in hives i'm not interested um and do you not, do you not give a damn about your health no not when it comes to cheese i mean come on hey, we're, damn. Here, we're here for a yeah. good time oh <laughs> michael floated in no i i got it I, yeah. good one thanks um, michael thanks for and Food hell. Oh man. Um Leaf mold. I, I think the um the pith of of fruits, so oh. <laughs> oranges and uh clementines, satsumas. I just don't see what they were on about when they invented that. What? I don't like them To be fair, you're not cake. you're not supposed to eat it. <laughs> But when I, when I was a small boy though, and you'd and you'd get a, a tangerine, a clementine, a satsuma, or whatever, I would forensically remove the pith. <laughs> now, now I I do a a functional job of peeling the tangerine, <laughs> split it in two, and shove it in my mouth. I like I, I don't even try anymore, and I'm I'm not mm-hmm. sure I'm not sure my life's poorer for it. No, I I think that's probably true, and I think that I've maybe gone on the same journey with as you, with regards to pith. But my um, children are still in the phase where any kind of remnant of that. I think the thing that it really, um, it feels like it, it shares too many similarities, similarities, similarities with smegma. Oh. <laughs> Back to cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly not a, a word that's used too much in the podcast, but uh, it feels like it's orange surprising. smegma. <laughs> I'll have to try it. I've never really thought of it that way. Well, there's a review video for you. Yeah. And then after that, I'll try Piff. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Lovely stuff. <laughs> um, on that bombshell. Uh, Quivia, I guess. Correct. Let's move on to Q U. I'm going to spell it wrong Q U R X N Y T. Quivia. I have to rewrite this song now, what? Um, for the first time in what feels like years at this point, uh, I've got some general knowledge questions. For s- the original Quivia was, was all about J- GK, and uh, it's just become more and more difficult to do because we're doing things like food festivals. How on earth am I supposed to do five general knowledge questions? But anyway, um, so five questions. I've got a tiebreaker if there's a tie to break. Um, here we go. I uh, will ask each of you the same question and they are all numerical so feel free to take the Stuart approach and plus one plus or minus one um longest time the world record longest time dunking a biscuit can start with uh shan on this um do we get to know or are we allowed to ask subsidiary questions or do i just have to give a number ask what you want you'll get you'll get the same answer that we always get that Nathan has failed to do adequate research <laughs> past, past the, the initial question. Are you, sorry, are you suggesting I phone these in? <laughs> I, 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 very, very seriously, those allegations. Docked 10 points. Um, uh, you, I, in which case, ask, I'm not going to ask a subsidiary question. You may ask a question, I may not have the answer, though. Two hours. Two hours. Uh, Stuart. I'm going to go for 142 seconds. That's two, so two, down. two minutes 22. Uh, two minutes. So two hours, two minutes 22. 
MJ. So I'd like to reveal two important updates. First and foremost, this is the first podcast that we're recording with my new internet. So I hope the <laughs> listeners are I hope the listeners are enjoying unprecedented uh, quality with no breaks from my voice uh, on my limited power. <laughs> <laughs> um, second of all, I'm, I've uh, got into cocktails and I'm currently drinking a porn star martini. Um, it's quite a strong drink and I'm starting to feel the effects. So um, one one <laughs> asks me uh, to find the midpoint be- between two minutes <laughs> twenty two and two hours and it's simply too hard so i'm gonna go i unfortunately i do have to do the dickhead thing and do two minutes uh 22 seconds and one millisecond <laughs> you're going above Good. above two minutes yeah, yeah. you you said you said, said two, two minutes, minutes 22 yeah yeah i'll go above yeah all right yeah i reckon uh, you know if the biscuit's got enough integrity be that uh large thick oats and a very dry texture I'm, 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 pissy, I'm basing pissy, this pissy. off the fact that the the world record for planking is about eight hours, and I just think that world records I hold two world records as it happens. Um, and sorry, sorry. I like to, I like to get that into every conversation. I'm, <laughs> fact, I'm amazed that it, we've gone 45 minutes without how's, mentioning it. How's the weather? How's the weather, Shan? Well, <laughs> world record brain tells me. How did you manage planking for eight hours? No, did I balls? <laughs> um, yeah, so I always think that the the world records they they have to be jaw dropping, otherwise, you know. So two minutes, I would be frankly disappointed. So what are your jaw dropping? Yeah. We can't just leave leave that. Then what are your jaw dropping yeah. world records? Well, um, they're both about blowing Maltesers, which are <laughs> well, which are, aren't people from Malta? <laughs> <laughs> as in as in as in like the old advert where you 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 make a Maltese and levitate so yeah so i i held briefly the world record for lying on your back and blowing a Maltese. uh was it a height or a time it was a time it was a duration world record and then i broke the world record for blowing a Maltese with a straw across a floor <laughs> wow well, I, yeah. I, I sense an opportunity here for something we never get a chance to do. Quick, a quick subsidiary quivier in which Nathan <laughs> Peterson can take part. What was Shan's world record for 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 making a Malteser levitate? Sorry, novelist slash uh, sorcerer <laughs> Andrew Shanahan. What was his What was his world record? What are we going for for making a Malteser levitate? Can I just ask? Did you nibble the chocolate from the Malteser before you made it levitate? The Guinness people were very particular about not nibbling chocolate. But it's not. A, listen, if the chocolate's not there, it's not a Malteser, is it? I yeah. can't do it with the chocolate on it. I can do. I can, if you nibble the chocolate away, I can. I can levitate that for upwards of upwards of four or five seconds. But with the chocolate, I'm going for twenty-seven seconds. Oh, bloody hell! No, this <laughs> is. Because you're you're exhaling, so it's not just most people can't hold their breath for thirty seconds, let alone exhale. He could be a pearl diver for all we know. <laughs> no, novelist slash sorcerer not, slash pearl diver. Said. <laughs> well, he blows Maltesers, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, I guess. I mean, he's already he's already led with it. it has to be jaw dropping. So I'm going to say three days. No, I'm going to say. Um, I'm going to say. 15 seconds. Ooh. MJ, have you got a guess? 12.7 seconds. No, 13.7. Because <laughs> I just thought 12.7 is pretty easy. 13 is more impressive. <laughs> <laughs> this new me drinking cocktails during the potty is going to be good, isn't it? Is it? Um, Shan, do you wish to divulge the answer? What, what was what was your guess, Stu? Uh, what did I say? Twenty-seven. 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 <laughs> You're all very generous. It was three and a half seconds. <laughs> Theo. Yeah. Hang on. A, hang on a second. <laughs> the, the man that says all world records have to be jaw dropping. Yeah. Three I know. seconds. I know. Come it, on, I, I've been routinely lampooned by my friends for having absolutely the most feeble. Out, world records ever. Out of interest, were you the first person to set that record? I, I was. 
Do, do you happen to know what the record is for blowing a malt, a, a white Maltesers? Because I reckon I might go for that one. <laughs> <laughs> is a white Malteser the one where you've nibbled off the chocolate? <laughs> Um, yeah, go for it. That, well, it was. Um, I was writing an article about Guinness World Records, and they said, "Well, do you want to set a world record?" And I was like, "Yeah." And they said, "This one has just been submitted. Do that one." And I was um, rubbish. Um, and what was what was the straw one? Was that a distance? Or was that a, a duration? Yeah, I think that was slightly more exciting. It was about fourteen foot, and it's with a straw, so it is like. But again, it was, it's a bit rubbish. They were both beaten within like six months you know there's that guy in america who just his his thing is that he he breaks world records Mm -hmm. and he has about i think he has like six seven hundred guinness world records wow and he's got it now the bastard (laughs) (laughs) he would have had to have shipped them in unless it was done very recently as well i wonder if there's different like weights to the chocolate to the maltese they've only had maltese in america a very short under a year Yeah. yeah Is it really? Yeah, yeah. Whoppers would was, Whoppers. Yeah, the American equivalent. I wonder if he blew a Whopper. As <laughs> <laughs> a different podcast. Uh, oh, great, great work! Wow, phenomenal, phenomenal. Long play set up. That's all written. That was written. Question two. <laughs> In. <laughs> oh no no no. Mm. In 2018, YouGov um, did a survey which showed that McVitie's chocolate digestive was the nation's favourite biscuit. <laughs> what percentage of the survey, uh, the surveyed, enjoy a said digestive? Uh, Stuart. Wait, enjoy or... So I think the what survey was... How, yeah, I think it was how many of these biscuits do you like? And it was basically how many people said... you. So I like the chocolate digestive. So right. it's not necessarily um, people that said it was their favourite. Oh right, oh right, oh yeah. So it's basically it's basically which biscuit was 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 enjoyed the most, but not necessarily everyone's top pick. Right, I was going to go for thirty-seven percent when I thought it was how many yeah. top pick. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go for eighty-four percent. Oh, eighty-four percent. Michael Jameson, seventy-nine percent. Nine percent and Shan ninety four, ninety four. No, I think there's in, I think there's a substantial amount of weirdos in the world that don't like chocolate. No, I don't think so. Wait, <laughs> is <it a> chocolate digestive? <laughs> yes, the chocolate digestive, Michael. No. Oh, I thought it was a regular. No, if you listen to the question, you might hear the. Um, <laughs> the <words. laughs> You're still thinking about blowing whoppers. Wait, well, hang on. <laughs> did you say milk chocolate or dark chocolate? Uh, uh, it was... uh, 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 carry on. Case dismissed. Class <laughs> closed. <laughs> Class closed. Case dismissed. What burger, lad? Sticking with the chocolate digestive, dark or milk, who knows? Um, approximately how many cal- calorie calories are found in an average 266 gram pack, which I think is your, your, your regular medium pack. Uh, I was going to read out the answer then, but that's not what I'm. This, <laughs> it's not how quizzes work. Uh, Michael, how many calories in a 266 gram pack of um, chocolate digestives? Um, for the record, this was milk that I checked. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-two, times five, nine. Twenty-two times thirty-nine. This is just maths now. <laughs> <laughs> Two times thirty-nine. Oh, chocolate again. Blunder. Uh, Twenty-two times uh, uh, sixty-seven. This, this goes out to Luke. Um, how's this maths on a podcast? Is this good? To <laughs> One thousand four hundred seventy-four calories. One oh. four seven zero. Oh, no. no, incorrect. One four seven four. One four seven zero. Uh, Shan. <laughs> Six eighty. 680. That's yeah. quite some swing. Um, and Stuart. So the last time last time we had someone affiliated with Man V Fat on the podcast was when Stuart Norman sell just, just bossed calories. And I'm way out on what Shan said. And now I'm wondering whether it's some kind of Man V Fat like cal- Quickly. calorie Quickly. sorcery. 1,750. Oh, you know Quickly message uh, Stu. 
So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, question four. In 2015, a survey showed that the UK were the biggest consumer of biscuits. Yeah. But how many kilos per capita do we eat in the UK? Remind me of the capita a square mile. <laughs> yes, no, it's a thousand people. Right. It's a square <laughs> mile of a thousand people. I was going to say, if you choose somewhere like Birmingham, probably right, loads. Yeah. Whereas the middle of Wales, less, unless sheep eat biscuits. <laughs> Which they might. I don't know what the supplies are. So, like. how many kilos of biscuits per capita? But yeah, per uh, year. Shan first. Uh, yes, sorry, yeah. per year. <sighs> Shan. I, I, I mean, it, it's literally pull a figure out of the air with this one, yeah. I'm afraid. Um, 12. I, I'm really a big fan of the way you said 12. Um, <laughs> Stuart, <laughs> um, if you could please repeat your answer in, in a similar style. I'm. I'm, I'm I'm torn because I reckon I eat less than a kilo of biscuits a year. So, but I think I'm atypical. So I'm going to go for seven. You're a typical, you're a typical what? Well done. <laughs> MJ. So capita is 100, right? No, it's Thousand. per person, Michael. So no, per, no, per, 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 per capita, capita, so per yeah. thousand um, people. Per capita so is what? per person. Yeah, it's per head. It's per person. Oh, it? Capita. Capita oh, is God, the last, yeah. I thought Capita was a thousand people. Bloody hell, it's a good job you don't work with numbers. Oh. Oh, right. So, <laughs> I don't yeah. work with heads, mate. <laughs> so, in that case, well, I, I think, yeah, I think Just... we all eat 1.12 kilos. So, so is that what you 1.2? 1.12. Four packets of biscuits a year per person. Nate, are you just, you just keep repeating the wrong thing. 1.12, just to be clear. Because you did it on a previous question as well. You didn't read... What back what I actually said, and I don't know if there's some sort of bias or. And now it's gone quiet. I don't even know what's it's tension. Uh... <laughs> Question five: um, <laughs> Prince William and Kate Middleton uh, famously, I I found out this week, had a wedding cake made. As we all know, they're passionately in love. Yeah. Uh, Prince William and Kate Middleton had a wedding cake made from rich tea biscuits. Yeah, I thought that but was a appro- question. Oh. But approximately how many rich tea biscuits were included in the cake? Starting with Stuart on this one. 3,000, Nathan. 3,000 per cap. <laughs> MJ? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15. That's his answer. <laughs> Write it down, 15. <laughs> Eight, no, 18, 36, so there's 60, There's 74 on the bottom tier, probably 60 mid, 50, so 70, 130, let's say 190. 190 biscuits? Sorry, cut out there, what was it? Five? Hundred, 190. One, 190. 190 yeah. biscuits? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the future king's cake. <laughs> um, yeah, no 190,000. <laughs> <laughs> you were closer with your first guess. Did I um, start? And, no. And Shan. Um, 1,200. 1,200. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. This is fascinating, fascinating work. Um, this is the best possibly the best quiz I've ever had um, right wow. let's go through the answers then we don't need a tiebreaker we have a, a conclusive answer and it's, yes. it's going to be magical <laughs> number one longest time to dunk a biscuit it wasn't two hours um, because I, I think even even the the sturdiest of hobnob would, would relent under that sort of moisture um, <laughs> it was five minutes and 17 seconds and it was uh, it was Done by a, a gentleman named Cherry Yoshitaki from Japan. Well done, Michael. Uh, couldn't find any information on the type of biscuit. Hmm. Oh. Interesting. Um, the percentage of people who say they like a McVitie's chocolate digestive, uh, 81%. Um, so wow. That, that's two for MJ so far. Well, what, what did MJ say? 79, I think. 79. Oh, what an absolute penis. Yeah, one percent, one one percent in it. 
Um, sticking with the chocolate digestives, how many calories are found in an average packet? 1,316. Oh, get off! So, <laughs> currently the porn star is three for three. <laughs> Have we got an individual calorie count for a chocolate digestive? Uh, I, do you know what? I should it's got to be around 60. Yeah, I think it's about, I want to say 67, I think, when I was looking. Yeah. Um, All that. <clears throat> I think that's roughly what I based my calculation 84, on. Actually, I think I was... 84 calories in a chocolate digestive. Right, my weight was off, Milk or dark? Uh, it doesn't matter. I don't see colour. <laughs> is, milk, is milk a colour? Is dark, <laughs> like, is, is, is dark a colour? <laughs> Do you see cherry percentage? <laughs> Uh, question four. Uh, the survey uh, for the uh, UK with the biggest consumer of biscuits. Per capita, we eat, and this is astounding if it is per person, 13 kilograms, 13.6 kilograms per person. Piss off. Make your, nice. make your voice go a bit higher pitch, Nate. Well, I just don't know if I can, mate. That's, <laughs> over a kilo a, that's over a kilo a month. Yeah. I think I'm skewing the average, though. <laughs> Uh, any any four uh, kilograms since the start of this podcast. <laughs> Great. Um, for no bonus points whatsoever. Any any hazard uh, of guesses on the second and third place countries? Ooh. USA and Germany. Oh, so it, it, sorry. Uh, oh, Europe. So not the USA. Germany and Germany. Germany. Yeah, Germany and Poland. France and Spain. Italy and France. Oh. Fran or France if you're from. Where you're from? Uh, Danish cookies. Yeah. Final <laughs> question. <laughs> Who won that one though? Uh, Shan did with twelve kilograms. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and finally, the rich tea cake biscuit. Um, uh, it was, was sizeably more than 190. Um, <laughs> in fact, I mean, you you probably bought about 190 for your uh, secret Santa, MJ. Shit, I did. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But so I should clarify. I bought a guy at work who loves rich tea biscuits, so I bought him the ultimate rich tea biscuit tasting kit, which Ooh. included one pack of every single brand of rich tea biscuit I could find, <laughs> and a chart to mark off texture, flavour, blah blah blah. He very much enjoyed it. Did he, did he know it was you? I mean, it was, I pretty, it was pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, has he done the chart yet? Or yeah, he does. Um, it was. I believe it was um, shit. I can't remember. I'll text him, but Please. I think it was something like um, R McVitie's light came out very high. Really? Yeah, they came out really high. I think they were winning for a while. It, they might have won it. Um, McVitie's normal definitely didn't win it, but they were they were towards the top. I genuinely didn't know there was a, McV uh, a Rich T light until your crazy shenanigans. Wow. Um, Final question. So, yeah, the Prince William cake. Uh, it was 1,700. Uh, wow. Which is still 200 less than your nan gets through in a weekend. Uh, so, so Shan also takes that point. So, he gets two points. MJ gets three. Is tonight winner. Brain of Quivia gets zero. Stuart has walked out. out. Stuart has walked out. He's got zero. Absolute dickhead. <laughs> oh, and he's not going to hear me saying it. Oh, no, but it. I will say it again when he returns. Don't you he'll, worry. He'll hear what? it when uh, when he edits. What a wonderful, wonderful day. <laughs> oh, God. That's, that's the best thing to happen to me all year. <laughs> <laughs> zero yeah. points. Yeah, zero. I'm going to call him Mr. Zero. <laughs> From hero to zero. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Stuart, Stuart routinely wins this quiz, Shan, and uh, it's quite, you know, it's fair to say he's quite confident about the fact that he's brain of Quivio and uh, just nice every now and again when it just blows up in his face. I'm glad to have contributed to his fall from grace. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you you, you stole two points off, for, if, if nothing else. So. I'm disappointed with my calorie estimates, though. That's, that's bad form. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're quite some way off, but hey. Maybe you live in a world where you're just sort of, you know, you're happy and wish that all biscuits were less calories. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> one day, one day we'll get to that 680 pack of uh, calorie pack of biscuits. That's that's the dream. That's what the 
That's what the scientists should be working on, not a vaccine. Um, that's a joke, obviously. They should definitely be working on it. <laughs> um, let's Who's move just on returned? to... Hello, Stuart. You all right, mate? No. Do you have to go to the toilet? Sure. I'm doing a <laughs> dance. I'm doing a happy dance. <laughs> He's hating it. He's hating it. Nah, fair. Go, look, can't win them all, mate, can you? Although yeah. you could at least try. Yeah, yeah, one yeah I can't. I can't win can them all. Wait, can't now. No, I can't yeah. win them all now, can I? No. <laughs> I wonder if I've ever scored zero. <laughs> <laughs> Routinely. Routinely. <laughs> so there you go. You're on my level, Stuart. How's that feel? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> what was your winning streak before this, Stu? Um, I'm not sure. 2018. That yeah. Uh, I, no, I don't win. I don't win every week. I just win ninety five percent. What happened? Do you want to talk us through it? I'm not. I'm gen, <laughs> genuinely, genuinely. Biscuits are something. Oh, here we a, go. No, here I, we go. I, I, I just think I think it's a niche subject, isn't it? You know, it's a niche subject. Northern man claims to not be familiar with biscuits. It's a niche. It's a niche subject. Yeah. I'm going to console myself. That, by, they, is that how you but, pronounce them? Niche. I've always called them nice biscuits. <laughs> is it niche? Not? Nice, isn't it? I'm going to console myself now with an 11.3 percent beer. <laughs> Enjoy. You know the number on that one. <laughs> and that's the cherry percentage. We. Twitter at Food Review UK, Facebook also at Food Review UK, and on Instagram at Fruitgram. Check it out. Anyway, biscuits. Let's move away from from schoolyard mockery um, and guessing games. Biscuits. What's so good about biscuits? Um, Shan, mm. <laughs> you said you said that uh, the, the the mighty Bourbon was was always going to be. Um, uh, the, the face of the book um, was that solely because of the the the, the, the Cornetto uh, comparison, so to speak, or, or is it is bourbon like your is your thing? Do you like a bourbon? Do you know, I, I'm not a massive bourbon fan. I do like. I think if you're going for a sandwiched biscuit, I, I think the custard cream is vastly superior, largely because <laughs> it's it's a single mouthful. Oh, Very sexual. Yeah. Do you know what I saw the other day though? Someone, I think I'm not sure if this is a Scottish thing, but they have cheese on a bourbon biscuit. Mm. No, no. Yeah. It makes me think you should probably try it. I'm not going to try it, but I'd like to see someone's face as they tried it. What kind of cheese was it? It was like it just looked like a strong cheddar. Hmm. I could if I. The thing that scares me more about that is the cheese, obviously. Um, <laughs> Yeah, nah, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd potentially try it. Yeah, I can, I can kind of imagine it from a mouthfeel perspective. Um, generally speaking, uh, I, you know, uh, of all for for my many, um, many, many food vices, biscuits don't really feature highly. If they're around, I'll eat six or seven packs, but mostly, <laughs> um, they they're kind of they're, they're a lot of work for the the calories i think there's a lot of crunching there's a lot of ceremony i would prefer just to go straight with mainlining haribo or something like that wow <laughs> i love the idea that biscuits have got ceremony um yeah they do yeah i've, I've experienced biscuits and i'll come to them in a second i've experienced biscuits this week that or uh, that certainly certainly fall into that category and i'm, I'm astounded at why um but now i'm saying you i guess that like i'm not I, I do definitely like biscuits. I wouldn't necessarily call myself a biscuit lover per se, but at the same time, um, at the same time, when they're around, I will shovel them into my face like there's no tomorrow. Like they are literally the last biscuits that I'll ever consume. Um, it's it's quite weird. And on, on this diet hiatus, this diatus, if you will, um, it's <laughs> I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, biscuits have been a, a weird, unexpected vice. 
Um, Stuart notoriously hates biscuits from what he was saying, hence why he knows nothing about them. MJ, biscuits, where, where are you standing, mate? What's, what's, what's about biscuits? Oh, it's a great biscuit. It's a great uh, food product. Um, it's a wonderful communal food product at work. Really brings people together. We've chosen a good week for this uh, episode as well, because I think the biggest food news of the week is the release of the Biscoff Creams which is two circular Biscoff biscuits sandwiched between a vanilla cream. I, I um, think the cream is sandwiched between the biscuits rather than vice versa. Well, especially if it was the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very odd, very weird eating experience. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'd like to get them uh, out. A lot, lot of the old food Instagram accounts are managed to managed to find them today, despite them, well, I guess, uh, I guess they're sort of essential to... Food Instagrammers, now. Nah. <laughs> Kid, kidding. Um, no, good. No, they're just brilliant. Uh, they're convenient. They're also very um, affordable. They're good value. What biscuits they in are. general? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's huge. I mean, look at the biscuit aisle. Look at the biscuit aisle in the in the supermarket. Right. It is huge. Mm. You don't um, see a, an aisle that big. Or a section dedicated to another food, like cereal. You don't see their aisles near anywhere near as big as the biscuit aisles. I think, yeah, I think you do. No, yeah, I think you do. Not, yeah. in, the, not in the supermarkets I've been in. Maybe, maybe not. Go on. MJ, I think you made a really good point about the fact that it's it's the the really unique thing about the biscuit is its communal uh, power. Yeah, because I, I'm struggling now to think of another sort of food group. That is designed to be shared with a similar number of people. Yep. The only thing I think of is crisps, but my hand Ooh. starts gripping the bottom of the bag if you're sharing crisps, <laughs> because you can feel the bag going. Um, but yeah, well, I can't think of another bunch of grapes. But I mean, you know. <laughs> actually, at work, back when I wasn't working at home, we were grapes and biscuits. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like two different teams, like Sharks and Jets. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Very, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm now trying to think of a, a, an appropriately funny other food, but I'm not going to. Um, cookies versus biscuits. We, we, we discussed this before when uh, Rich came on. It was a hugely contentious episode. Um, what What's the difference? Is, is, a, is a cookie a biscuit or is it not a biscuit? Yeah, I do think it is a biscuit. It's a type no, of biscuit no. in my eyes. No. A a a cookie like, for example, a Maryland cookie that is essentially just a biscuit, a biscuit called a cookie is a biscuit. But when you get any... Th- Maryland, are those the unbearably sweet ones? <laughs> yeah. Well done, Michael. Yeah, good reference. Um, those, those any, any cookie that's just a small, hard cookie is a biscuit. But I think that anything that you buy... That's, for example, the you know you bought the five in a bag. There, I think that's a different product. I think that's a baked good, rather <laughs> than go. it's got more. It's got it's got more in common with a brownie than it has with a biscuit. Biscuit. Oh, God, but... What does biscuit mean, Michael? What baked twice? Yeah, uh, uh, Bis- because because biscuits are biscuits are dry and hard. That's the whole purpose of a biscuit. It's dry and hard. It's had the moisture gone out of it. It lasts for a long time. A cookie is not a biscuit. Imagine, imagine thinking Rich's cookies are, are live in the same world as a fucking as a, as a rich tea. Come on, I know they've got, they've got rich in them, but <laughs> I mean, you literally the science says the science says that an actual cookie is not a biscuit. One's well, baked twice, the other one's cookied. The actual science. What's what's, what's well, in the, in sorry? The... What's the what's the actual science? Because I'm on Wikipedia. Oh, oh well name, done, mate. Biscuit. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Well Let's see how many times yeah. biscuit is mentioned yeah. on the on yeah. the cookie page. Yeah, because in America they don't have biscuits. They call all anything that's a biscuit a cookie. In this country, what we call a cookie isn't a biscuit, unless it's a Maryland or a, a, a packeted. If it's packeted like a biscuit, it's a biscuit. Shan, how do you feel about cookies versus <laughs> biscuits? <laughs> Um, I'm not sure I can summon up the same level of <laughs> passion for the the debate, and so I'm going to cede my time to Stu. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Stuart, you're saying that 
Uh, in America, biscuits are all called cookies. Uh, irrelevant. Why do you, why'd you do? Why do you do like a higher pitch voice for me when I'm a I'm an intensely <laughs> masculine man? <laughs> it's only when you're saying stupid things. <laughs> if I was if I was like doing an impression of all your charity work, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'd not, <laughs> not, not do charity in that. Uh, impression of I, my charity work. How we? Uh, <laughs> um, no. Cookies, as we all know, have their origins in 7th century AD Persia. So, <laughs> biscuits, on the other hand, well, I'll tell you. Maybe. Give me a second. Different types of baked goods. Is... Different. Uh, English, British, so <laughs> don't worry about it. I'll be the judge of that. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> this has been good. Um... <laughs> I'm going to move on to something way less contentious. Um, Shan, Shan rolled, kicked the, kicked the roll ball, rolled the kicks off. Kicked the yeah. roll ball. Um, with, with his his preference for a custard cream. I've been drinking. This is the new me. I'm drinking during podcasts now, and I can't keep it down. Yeah, um, I drink on work nights now. I don't know if I mentioned that. Every, <laughs> every day is a work night. Every day is a drink night. It's one of my less successful sayings. Um <laughs> <laughs> One of anyone's less successful sayings to me. Um, a- anyone else? Can anyone beat the custard cream? I think or... the uh, I think I think the bourbon. I, I think the bourbon genuinely is the the one inexpensive food product that holds its own amongst absolutely anything. A packet of cheap bourbons is what fifty p max fifty p. And and a, a pa- and a bourbon biscuit, a cheap bog standard value brand bourbon biscuit, holds its own against any f- sweet snack in the world. Interesting, you say that. Like just thinking about it, it, bourbon bourbon definitely falls into the category of biscuits that don't give a fuck about brand brands. Correct. Like like if yeah. you're talking, if someone says to you uh, uh, a chocolate digestive, instantly you will you will know that they're probably talking about yeah. McFitties or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, whereas, realistically, I mean, I don't even know. Do McFitties do uh, a bourbon or a custard cream? I, I think foxes do. Foxes, but who, but who, who cares? cares about foxes? I, yeah. know. I, I know. wonder if, because we, we see this a lot with um, food products, particularly biscuits and cereals, but you tend to see them all being made by the exact same factory yeah. and just different yeah. package. Yeah. I wonder if every single bourbon... Is made in the same place. Because, okay, oh shit, you've got the different shape ones, didn't you? I forgot about them. What different no, shape ones? Family circle, innit? Just for the, um, to, to promote the book, I was looking at getting um, a number of bourbons made to send out to people. Wow. But instead oh, of man. bourbon, I wanted the word help on them. Mm. Wow. Um, and the closest that I got was independent bakeries who oh. could do a small batch of them of like a hundred uh, bourbons with the word help on them. And it was ludicrous. It was like two, three quid a biscuit. Wow. Um, but you, you're right. The the rest of them are just churned out in factories. And there's like, I think there's about two or three main manufacturing areas for them. Wow. And you're right as well that they are essentially the same factory will make bourbon yeah. biscuits for five or six different companies yeah. and basically further to Stu's point it seems to me that the only real difference between a fox's bourbon packet and your little or your no brand name version is that the plastic's slightly thicker and that's what matters with a biscuit <laughs> the plastic um, exactly <laughs> I need to write something down now because I've just had an idea. Yeah. No, it's, okay, right, it's right about the biscuits. I remember, I remember years ago, like being told anecdotally by I think by, by my grandmother or something that Foxes made all the Marks and Spencers biscuits, and therefore Marks and Spencers biscuits were good. And I know, yeah. I know from experience, I used to work in a sausage factory, and and they made the. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Michael? <laughs> Did you blow any whoppers? I was a pa- no, I was a, I was a, I was I was a, sausage, I was a sausage packer for for a summer, and we we the, the they made branded they made walls and they made Richmond branded sausages, but then they also made Morrison's own brand, Aldi's own brand, various different other like budget own brands like the, the they were the it was a, a slightly different recipe, but they they were just pumping out they pumping out the sausages. 
<laughs> my my favorite fact about this whole pandemic thing is that one of the things that the the supermarkets have done to try and survive is that they they moved from producing and selling uh, or you know having manufacturers produce for them over 70 brands of sausages <laughs> to to centralizing it to six amazing and, and and for me i don't know i think that fact has resonance beyond the pandemic i think the fact that we previously lived in a culture where there were seven who needs 70 sausages <laughs> Let the record state Nate Peterson has waved his hand in the air with gusto. Do you... I wild boar sausages with fennel and artichoke and yeah. Uh... Well, <laughs> Shan, why are you trying to take my sausages away from me? <laughs> I'm not. I'm trying to say that you, you are you will suffer from the agony of choice with seventy. Yeah. You'll be there dilly dallying and dithering on the sausage aisle for hours. Um, I've had to walk around people like you in the supermarket. <laughs> Get in Richmond and knob off. I think it's very clear from my body shape that um, I do not suffer from the, uh, <laughs> the hell of choice. Um, aye, 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 aye. Get your Richmond and knob off. Um, so I've got two two things to say. Now, first of all, my show idea is making gourmet versions of cheap foods. So Bourbons. I mean, it's been done before, Gourmet. but I, I haven't done it before. Gourmet. Um, and more like your, Gourbon. Your... Gourbon. <laughs> you make Gourmet food in your... Uh... What? what? <laughs> and second, Stuart, um, your point there. Um, at the start of what you were saying, you said Hobnob, but then later on you said Bourbon. Which biscuit were you talking about then? I, I didn't say Hobnob at all. Mm. Yeah, you, you said Hobnob at the start of what you were talking I, about. I didn't I say Bourbon, mate. I haven't, I haven't mentioned Hobnobs tonight. No, you definitely I, said Hobnob. I, de- I mean, no, I definitely won. didn't. And even if I did, I edited the podcast, so I definitely didn't. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, I was a gr- I, in that case, I was nodding along with you <laughs> all whilst you were saying that because I thought you were talking about Hobnobs, but Bourbons are fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. Uh, I don't. I don't know if there is any biscuits that I particularly. I'll tell you what I don't like, and it, I think this is going to annoy. It. Um, MJ, a biscuit I don't like because I think they're overly pretentious. I don't even know what their name is. It's like the the Lib- Libnitz or whatever they're fucking oh. with. The... Oh. Choco Libnitz. Oh. oh, mate. Come oh. on. Just the blandest of biscuit with Crap. some rubbish chocolate chucked on top. No, thanks. No, thanks, mate. I'm fairly close to throwing my headphones off. I know. Um, I, know you, I know you're a big fan of the awful <sighs> cracker that calls itself a biscuit. They're, they're nice, they're a bit muted, they're quite rich, and they're just, they taste like really fine ingredients. You, you know, you're not a million miles away from the truth by saying they're boring. They are boring. <laughs> um, but they're, they're nice, they've got a great texture, the quality of the chocolate's great, the ch- snap of the chocolate is excellent. Good snap. Um, and the underlying biscuit's really good. I actually am a fan of, they do in, I don't know if it's in Europe specifically rather than not the UK, but they do something called Zoo. So Leibniz Zoo, and they're like little animal biscuits with just not coated in chocolate. So a bit more of the richness of the butter biscuit comes through, um, which actually a bit nicer. Mm. Sound mm. like absolute dog bob, like awful. Did, I mean, just they're, they're in cute animal shapes. Oh, Maybe yeah. That, make that. Yeah, is sorry. It? That is what matters, the shape of the biscuit. <laughs> oh, yeah. correct. Um, One that I've never understood is the ginger nut. Just purely from a like any biscuit, which challenges you from a dental point of view like that. <laughs> it's I, I don't know whether it's an age thing or just that I'm. I just if I have to expend the calories that I'm consuming to chisel my way through the biscuit, you reach a certain point where it's like, am I actually losing weight from eating? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's the like celery. celery, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's like yeah. celery stew. Yeah. Celery nuts. Same. The, I tell you what, though. No, no. A, like a shop bought a, 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 a McVitie's ginger nut is dead. But like, a, I remember we used to get we used to get a ginger ginger biscuits from the market that were like a more yes. akin more akin to a large ginger cookie, and they were they were because ginger mm. ginger is a flavour that belongs in biscuits. Yeah. But the, but the ginger nut 
do, does the dirty on on the on ginger flavouring biscuits. It really does. Yeah. It doesn't provide ample ginger flavour, and it provides too much of a textural challenge. And do you know what's it also bad about that is that it's encouraged artisanal um, biscuit producers to put flecks and chunks of ginger in their biscuits, and that just should never happen. Wow. Um, for the record, I don't think we've ever had anything as intellectual as artisanal said on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I was just We're desperately trying not though. to say anal. <laughs> <laughs> so we have welcome to, <laughs> welcome to MJ World. Um, I I will one hundred percent agree with you on uh, ginger nuts and back you up on that. What I will say though is I had a mild obsession a couple of years ago with ginger creams. Oh yeah. With, yeah, which seems it. to have a, which seems to have a much better texture and the added bonus of um, sweet 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 calories in the middle. Sweet goo, yeah. Sweet but goo. that's where you know because then you you definitely know that you are in a positive calorie deficit or the opposite of deficit because you've got the goo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that a science? Is it? I think so. <laughs> as close as I get. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of goo, what 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 are our opinions on Oreos? Mm. So, I'm not actually. I was going to say I'm not actually a big fan of sandwich biscuits, except Oreos, which I think are just a wonderful creation. I like their playfulness and their. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> not talking about in the bedroom, mate. <laughs> Not that kind of sandwich. But, but, <laughs> but, not by, which that I mean, by which I mean their um, willingness and ability to switch up flavours and um, throw some novelties in there and whatnot. <laughs> um, we're still talking about this from an eating perspective, yeah? Yes, I like the way yeah. an Oreo spanks me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm reading between them. I... I was ne- I was never a particular Oreo fan until until I had the uh, the double stuff. Oh, are we still talking about that? <laughs> <laughs> and it was then the, it was the, then that, that because for me the, the 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 that intense cocoa of the Oreo biscuit um, needs that needs the double stuff to to balance it out. More goo. Yeah, more goo, more goo necessary. Mm. <laughs> I prefer the balance of the original because I think the I do think the flavour of the cocoa biscuit is slightly more interesting than the flavour of the cream, but it's still a great balance and yeah, a fair fair comment. I know the the double stuff has a lot of fans. Brilliant biscuit though. It it doesn't it gets a little bit of a bad rap. I think people don't appreciate the depth of flavour that it really has. If like if you eat an Oreo, I, if I challenge any, anyone listening to this, if you've got a pack of Oreos nearby, original Oreos. Grab one, eat it with your eyes closed, maybe put on some 16-bit SNES music to really get the full sort of immersion. <laughs> Any particular game theme tunes? I mean, I'd go for Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest just because it happens to be the best video game soundtrack of all time, but I suppose it's up to you. Mm. I, the thing <laughs> that I worry about with the Oreo is that I feel that it's it's cultural appropriation in many ways in that we are appropriating another culture's uh, biscuit traditions and culture and and you know the their it, it's it's americans you know it's what americans do and i feel like you know with americans being the predominant cultural voice for the last 100 years i feel like we should be ploughing our own furrow when it comes to biscuits and and you know all this sort of you know you, you twist off the top one you use the top one to eat the the goo and then you basically bin the biscuits like that's just i think we could do more with a garibaldi you know we could, we could be <laughs> teaching the, the kids we could be teaching the kids how to fish out the little raisins um and you know doing fun things with with <laughs> our biscuits and so that <laughs> over to the states rather than you know them dictating to us mm. about 
what biscuits and we and you know what we do with them biscuits. So I, one was... fun thing about the Oreo though is that if you say it quickly enough, if it's a palindrome. Oreo. No, it's not. All right. No. Oh, right. oh you're going to say if you're going to say it wrong, then maybe. Yeah. Oh, you're up. Oh, you're up. Oh, you're all. Oh, you're all. Hello. Oh, hello. 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 <laughs> it's the Somerset version. Shit, I always get confused between them. So it was, it, and Somerset. It was exactly as, you, as you've described there, is the, it, the only issue I have with the Oreo. I have, no, I have no problem with the Oreo existing as a biscuit in our culture. If, any, <clears throat> if anything, I see it as uh, Americans trying to appropriate British biscuit oh. culture by them mm. them making what is essentially what is basically a very british biscuit rather than an american cookie i do have the issue with us appropriating the ceremony of the oreo which was yeah. only something oreos have existed in britain since i think i i remember i remember getting my first oreos in about 1997 sorry omni <laughs> and uh, and that that twist and lick business that didn't that didn't appear over here until a few years ago, and I have I, I do take issue with the sentiment of the the that's a false that try to implant a false memory. It's like Werther's Originals. Your grandma mm. didn't like Werther's Originals because Werther's Originals didn't exist until nineteen ninety seven. Don't tell me what my grandma did. Didn't like <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. Werther's Originals came out in ninety seven. I don't recall Werther's Originals existing much yeah. before the nineties. Yeah, it's an implanted memory. Yeah. Right. Hang on. Much before the nineties. Now you've, you've literally um, skipped a decade there, mate. You've gone from ninety seven to much before the nineties. Uh, well, the ninety uh, seven's in the nineties, mate. <laughs> Introduced nineteen oh three. How many Werther's originals are eaten per capita? That's every thousand people, Nathan. <laughs> Zero if you count people that live to the end of the year. They ate them. I'm, go- I'm googling, wo- I'm googling Werther's died. originals now. Um, what's better, the year of the Oreo or the year of the apple? <laughs> what's worse or what's better? Yeah, I think we know which one's worse. Um, oh yeah, I need to film my apology video. That we should send any sort of biscuit eating tradition for any of our biscuits that we could export to the States. Because, you know, we need we need strong exports in our economy from now on. Yeah. So uh, what, what twist is, is try kid, and, is try it... and suck the bourbon cream out through the holes of a bourbon. <laughs> uh, no, no. Don't... Going all day. <laughs> would a um, It'd be... would a Cadbury finger count? Because you know when you try and stick it down, you. <laughs> <laughs> would they? I don't know if they'd. Um, obviously, women cut. But um... I tell you okay. what would. I tell you what would work. The um, impress. You know, like rubbing the foil on a Kit Kat. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, that's classic. That's not, not any. And then I'll tell you what, you down the middle. Yeah, I'll tell you what killed that the chunky. Yeah, did well that the fact that they don't they're not wrapped in foil anymore. No, very mm. true, very it, true. It, it, that shows how long it's been since I bought a a, a, a fingered can kick can. Oh. A double yeah, multi packs are, aren't they? No, the two fingers. Multi well. packs aren't wrapped in foil. Oh, well, maybe they are. Maybe they are. I was I was I the last one I had was a. a you know, a, a, a plastic size foil, yeah. yeah. Rather than oh, Jeff, four paper. fingers. Uh, <laughs> that's a bit personal. But... <laughs> I tell you, uh, when, it, it, no, it's two fingers. A, another oh. cer- ceremony around biscuits to, uh, from the other side of the world. Are you familiar with the Tim Tam? Yeah, the Tim Tam is the the superior the superior penguin, um, and the, yeah. the the Australians they nibble off a corner. And then they nipple, nibble off an, uh, an an opposite corner, and then they <laughs> suck a, a warm beverage through the Tim Tam, and it, it essentially explodes the biscuit. Yeah, it's not pleasant. If you're going to take eating advice from criminals, then <laughs> oh, I don't. I've just thought of a good <laughs> meme idea, actually. So you know, I did like the Pokemon, all the kids in the po- Pokemon. Um, well, you do the you do like evolve, right? So you do. You do bourbon evolves into penguin. Penguin evolves into Tim Tam. No, no, penguin, like evo- pen- penguin evolves into Fox's classic. What? Fox's classic. Mm. Oh, oh, Michael. Fo- Fox's classic. You're telling me you don't know the Fox's classic? Oh, I don't know it by name. It's a bloody good job we've done a biscuit episode. 
It's what? Why would here. it change colour, you nonce? It's the king of the biscuits, the Fox's classic. Oh, it's yeah, they are. Colour. They are actually nice. What? Yes, it is. It's What's chocolate about? covered, the one I've got in front of me. Yeah, it's chocolate yeah, cho- covered. Yeah, but the underlying biscuit ain't going to change colour and then change back, is it? Why not? That would be the shiny version, if you know your Pokemon info. Don't. This is brilliant. No, fo- Fox's classics are nice, actually. They are Fox's actually. classics are an incredible biscuit. You really like someone if you put out a Fox's Classic yeah. pack. Fox's Classics or any Tunnock's branded biscuit product. Ooh. I think you're straying dangerously into the... That's more like a sweet. A, a Tunnock yeah, tea, a t- tea cake. Oh, no, not, not a tea cake. I would never class a tea cake as a, as a, as a biscuit. But I would, I would perhaps put the Tunnock's Caramel Wafer in the... <laughs> In 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 the in the same realm as the wrapped the wrapped chocolate biscuit, i.e. the penguin, the club, the United. If you're a, if you're a a, a gourmand of a certain age, um, mm. but but no, not the not the not the tea cake. I mean, the tea cake's an incredible product, but not a biscuit. Oh no, it's not, a biscuit. it's not a biscuit. Uh, imported biscuit tradition. I've just thought of Danish having a tin of the Danish butter. Cookies, were they? And using it for sewing kits. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, those memes are flying around Facebook yeah. Yeah. massive at the moment. Every yeah. every every modern foreign languages teacher in a secondary school has a has a tin of those <laughs> full of full of glue sticks. <laughs> Just upsetting the children. Oh biscuit no glue. Oh. <laughs> Batteries is another one, isn't it? Yeah. Just always t- always tin, check though. before you put it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just uh, input on the the point about Tim Tams, which is that I cannot understand, other than sort of antipodean weirdness, about the fact that that is seen as a pleasant thing because it, it sort of builds up, doesn't it? It builds up like a pressure. Yeah. And then it is like an explosion of hot goo in your mouth. <laughs> and we're back to blowing a whopper. And how hard you suck. <laughs> There is no other way because it has to sort of force its way through. Yeah. It's, you yeah. can't just genteely sip. You have to give it a good old. Yeah. Never tried it, nor would I wish to. I do actually have Tam, Tim Tams here. Been waiting about three filming sessions to review with the boys. Well, next and now time it's Tim Tam Exploders, isn't it? Surely. Tim Tam Exploders. Yeah, you've got. To, they call them something. Slammers, Tim Tam Slammer. Is that what it's called? Think so. Yeah. But you, you, if you're doing a review of it, you want a, a dodgy sound effect for when it goes. Yeah. Well, I'm sure MJ can find certainly one. Probably have one in the in the, order <laughs> <laughs> in the old noise bank. Um, I'm gonna uh, one final point before we move on to Sockmed. Um, it's just a straightforward one: to dunk or not to dunk. I'm not a dunker, you know. I'm not a dunker. I used to be as a, as a boy. I used to, I, I, sorry. I used to dunk a biscuit just in my in my orange squash, my my Robinson special R. But as an adult drinking hot drinks, I'm not. You used to you used to dunk a biscuit in your orange squash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. And you just ridiculed me for the shit I come out with, and you said that ginger nuts though, innit? That, yeah. Ginger what, nuts same, were the biscuit same of my colour. Yeah. It's the same colour. <laughs> ginger nuts were the biscuit of my childhood, so you had to dunk them. In squash. In squash. So, That's what I was drinking. Do you expect me to drink? Yeah. Sort of oh, middle. Yeah. Sort of middle. Oh, yeah. I've, got, I've just got a beer here. I'll just dunk it in some beer. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. That, that's my point, right? I, I don't think, it, in the general run of day-to-day life, if you're having tea and biscuits with people, you very rarely see people dunking. I think it's a talked-up cultural phenomenon. I don't think that people dunk anywhere near as much as Ooh. is is supposed interesting i i think that i'm a keen dunker my biggest issue is uh time alignment i don't tend to be having biscuits when i'm having a coffee i don't tend to be having coffee when i'm having biscuits oh. if 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 ever the two do if like if you've got a venn diagram of mm. times i'm having I think you understand the concept. Um, <laughs> yeah, if if I've got the two in front of me, then I, I will almost certainly dunk. Um, and yeah, but I, I just don't tend to. I don't tend to drink, drink a lot of coffees. I tend to have one in the morning, and that's not that's not my biscuit time. Biscuit times in the 
in the evening when I'm not having coffee. So, yeah, I, I I can count on the fingers of one hand the number of times in my life I've dunked. Really? Yeah. Oh, I do. I do love a dunk. It's just opportunity more than anything. Ruins a ruins a brew. Ruins your biscuit. No, pass. You're not really a hot drink fan, are you, MJ? No, not correct. Um, I've just had the text from my mate about the rich tea. Um, it was indeed the McVitie's light that won. Wow, Jesus. Incredible stuff. Mental. You heard it here first. <laughs> Probably last. Um, it, it, something I, I jotted down, and actually it's perfect timing given that you've mentioned that. Um, this is more aimed at Stuart and MJ, and I think something that will probably play out later this year. Um, biscuit tournament. Yeah, probably. But it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of been done, hasn't it? In the you know, there's the like the the World Cups of of this, that, and the other. Mm. But I think Stuart, we've have to... we done it? No, yeah, we haven't. Not, we haven't, and we not, do not have either. everyone else. So it's not been yeah. done. Yeah, it's, it's not, not been done properly, it? is it? Crumbled Listen, it. I was going to say we 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 uh, Shane Man, we no, last year we put food um, mascots in a ring and made them fight, and it turns out that Captain Morgan is a dirty bastard <laughs> and basically a killer, and. I think that biscuits could do the same. Yeah. So there you go. I think I think biscuits have personality, unlike some foods. Let's make it happen then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna force you. I'm not gonna force you, mate. No, if no, you no, do, 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 no, 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 no. Move on. We'll MJ so, social media. MJ social media. Go on. He's <laughs> go on. He's, fu- he's fuming. He's Come fuming. on, let's do some other things that have been done before. Come on. Social media, right? As read you some know, questions yeah. from some people. Read, read some comments from some people. We do that every two weeks. Fuck Try man. to do it. You keep going. Uh, <laughs> Suck me. As you know, we post the lovingly created thumbnail on social media each uh, episode. And today we're going to read out your questions and comments. Look at the Facebook page. Sorry. We got, sorry. Uh, Look at the Facebook page. We got four comments, all from Becca Lumps. (laughs) Becca was well excited about this episode. He was loving the biscuit chatter. Um, It should be be noted that Becca did actually uh, unknowingly suggest this as as a topic in the recent. Frogmaster. Yeah. When we asked for niche yeah. products, niche topics, she did actually suggest biscuits, and I told her that it would be sooner than she thought, and it was. Yeah. And it is. Yeah. And it is, um, and it was. So, do you dunk? Already covered that. If so, what are the best dunking biscuits? Any biscuits you shouldn't dunk? Uh, whilst I don't actually dunk generally myself, I've, I've been known to. Um, I think the best is probably a hot dog. Yeah, I I reckon. Uh, I will say, coming back to something I, I mentioned, a surprisingly good dunker is the old ginger creams. Yeah, yeah. really, it sweetens up the uh, the bastards. Yeah, a ginger a ginger nut in itself is a very robust dunking biscuit because of because of its aforementioned hard, hardness. Yeah, I think second only to diamond, mm. isn't it? In the <laughs> I haven't actually, I haven't actually spoken too much about hobnobs this episode, but I think there'll be a lot of hobnobs fans out there that will be quite perturbed by that. Yeah. Uh, hobnob is a brilliant biscuit, and I'll yeah. tell you what one of its strongest factors is: the saliva flavor. Flavor. When you're chewing away on a hobnob or anything like that, if you suck the liquid out of the hobnob, and of course that will be some. <laughs> Sometimes that liquid will be created from your own saliva. The flavour of that sucked Where else saliva. Where from? <laughs> <laughs> you, you clearly don't know MJ. Yeah. <laughs> Doggy Biscuit is not a game that I'm unfamiliar Losing. with. Uh, <laughs> looting, yeah. Um, yeah, the suction on that is great. Anyway, um, biscuits you shouldn't dunk... Uh, trying to think of the, the ones that really fall off. Rich, yeah, may- Rich Tea's a dog dirt, aren't they? Rich Tea's quite bad. It, you, you, you're, you're falling apart when you when you lift it horizontal, really, aren't you? Yeah. Um, I, I could literally what... keep... Go on. No, you go on. 
I, was saying, I wonder what a hold, uh, hold up, brilliant. I wonder what a uh, Oreo does under the intense pressure and heat of a, of a dunk. I could be all right. I'd be willing to try it. A fusion of cultures. <laughs> <laughs> tea, tea and Oreos. A tea and Oreo, my dear. I'll, I'll write it down. It's not committal yet, but I'll write it down. Maybe for the next uh, Independence Day. Oh, f- that's brilliant. That's coming up. Yeah, Ooh. July fourth, I think this year. <laughs> You need July 4th for my sins. Uh, Independence Day special tea. And they love, uh, they, the Americans love jokes about tea, don't they? Oh, we threw it in, we threw it in the river. Brilliant. Tea Oreo well done, dip. Guys. So put, in the, uh, put in America back in the British thing where it belongs. Um, I could literally keep going, but I feel that's enough unless I think of a right belter. Oh, sorry. So I think I'm reading in reverse order. Uh, chocolate digestive or chocolate hobnob or both? Hobnob. hobnob. Yes, it's, it's hobnob, isn't it? I mean, realistically, both. But I mean, hobnob yeah. if I have to pick. Yeah. This is an interesting one. Rich tea fingers. Underrated. Discuss. Incorrect. <laughs> End of discussion. <laughs> well, rich... I quite like normal rich teas. and I, So rich tea fingers are a bit thinner. <laughs> I like both. Do you know what I like? Malted milk. Oh, yeah, malted, malted milk's one of my... Yeah. Chocolate malted milk. What a biscuit. I actually, so I actually think that chocolate malted milk is the best um, of what I would consider to be... Do- biscuit like, to biscuits. Yeah, bog standard yeah. biscuit, which I do not include. Yeah, yeah. It's absolute. You don't include a hobnob in a bog standard biscuit. So you, what you're talking about is own brand biscuits. I'm talking about bourbon, um, custard cream, custard cream, digestive, yeah, rich tea, rich tea, mal- yeah, sort of, uh, all the Avengers, chocolate malted, <laughs> all the Avengers. There's an, an entire an, another podcast. Which biscuit is which Avenger? The chocolate malted milk, or as I as I like to call it, Hawkeye, is an incre- <laughs> incredibly underrated biscuit slash Avenger. I'm applauding that because it's so bloody true. Yeah. I agree the fuck out of it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, your honour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, opinion on a fig roll. Oh, what? I was going to bring this up earlier. Blood, I tell you what, bloody love a fig roll. I, I'm not entirely sure it's a biscuit. Right. I'm not right. sure what it is. I, I love a fig roll. I bloody love a fig roll, but I'm going to put it all. I'm going to put this out there. Say it's an old man biscuit. Oh, one hundred! Oh, Jesus! Then all, I, I, I would... this old man biscuits. I can't. I mean, you know, you're not going to catch an old man eating a fox's classic, but uh, <laughs> you, you, pretty much every other biscuit is. Biscuits are the preserve of old people. Yeah, I think, but I think there's certain there's a, definitely a subclass. I mean, if I saw a seventeen year old eating a fig roll, I'd wonder what issues he had at home. <laughs> <laughs> It just doesn't he ring just true. He just vape and he pulls out a packet of rolls from his... <laughs> rolls? And just, just dons them down his throat. No. Instagrams it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nate walks up to him, puts his hand on his shoulder. Do you need some help, son? Come on. Yeah. Talk to it's me. Like the, it's like the Johnny Depp meme where the kid... Oh, what's your favourite biscuit? And the kid goes, fig roll, and he just puts his arm on it. It's basically <laughs> the same joke you made, really. You're listening to Frock Unwrapped, the Food Review UK podcast. Review it on iTunes if you dare. Um, also, <laughs> I just want to—I just want to come back to a biscuit that I have failed to see for many, many moons. Um, it's called the Cafe Noir, and it was uh, uh, essentially a coffee-flavored icing on a biscuit. And oh, <gasps> oh shit, son! Oh mama, I, I That's remember hard them when I... icing, hard yeah. Light yeah, like like a like a party ring type of icing. Yeah. Oh my god! I remember having them when I was like a kid or, or very young adult, and then they disappeared out of my life. And then I rediscovered them probably about five years ago in Tesco, Sainsbury, sorry, Sainsbury. Oh, and then they just disappeared again. Cafe Noir, peng. I don't say that lightly. Oh, peng. they were painting, mate. You have you have bored that out of the darkest shaft of my being. <laughs> I'm glad your shaft finally got a mention on this. <laughs> if you had a cafe noir in the dark shaft of your being, then you'd, you'd probably want it unlodged. <laughs> oh, oh. Shane, can I take can I take this opportunity to apologise um, for ever asking you on this podcast? Um, <laughs> 
I you, you don't deserve this. None of us deserve this, but you especially. I tell you what, I better hawk a few books from this. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Our fans don't won't even pay us anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god no I I gotta thank you for that if you that could is... make a gourmet cafe noir in your little um, segment that'd be fantastic I'm gonna bloody try I'd, I wouldn't even know how to um, achieve sure the ice in that hard but I'll give it a go sure that's what they were called cafe noir yeah yeah I'm looking at them on, on the old googles on the old googs on the old bing on the old googster oh, anyway wow. yeah. Love next, that. next something well, unfortunately, we did have a really good se- se- segue there. We had the uh, segue of the fig roll and the question mark over whether this fruit encompassed, or rather bis- biscuit, biscuit inverted commas, encompassed fruit snack is uh, is really a biscuit. Because we go straight into Maddie Madworld. Madders. Madders. Flat earthers believe Jaffa cakes <laughs> are a biscuit. <laughs> wow. Shelby... Shelby says, what even are they, though? Are they cakes? Maddie Madworld says, it's in the name, clown. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Yeah, Ooh. yeah, she's, cuss- she's cussing Shelbs down. Uh, Shelby says, I still wouldn't class it as a cake. I have no idea what it is. It's delicious. A bit of diffusion. Yeah. Uh, Maddie Madworld goes in hard. Definitely a cake. It has sponge Jaffa cake. Hmm, wonder what it is. Hmm. Uh, I would clearly draw uh, everyone's attention to the VAT case of 1991, which clearly proved that Jaffa cakes were indeed cakes because they obviously, uh, when they're left out, they get uh, harder, if you will, which is the want of a cake, whereas biscuits get softer when they're left out. So please move on. All right, tax spot. Uh, And what did Jason have to say about Maddie and Shell having an argument? (laughs) Did he not get overly excited? Probably. Um, I I don't know if I'm reading them in order. I'll read in the order that I read them, and that will become clear, I suppose. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the next comment is from Bong Lungs. Bong Lungs. I miss giving out four fingers no. to the girl. Oh, here we don't go. Read that one. Should I not read that <laughs> read, one? Read the next one. Read the next, <laughs> the next one. Geordie <laughs> Lyons replied to that saying eight fingers. Oh. Or yeah, am I supposed to skip that one as well? Yeah, probably that one as well. Uh, Bong Lungs. Bongers. Lungers. You look like my old teaching assistant, G. Is your name Mr. Stamp? Because I miss him. Man, he was such a G. Now I think he only fucked with me because it was his job. <laughs> Do you want to take that one, Shannon? Are you Mr. Stamp? Uh, uh, me? Yeah. Uh, why? Where can I be seen? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm not Mr. Stamp. Oh. Uh, I feel Shelby. I feel really bad that Jason felt like he had a real legitimate like connection with Mr. Stamp, and now he's upset that in the in the five years since Jason left school, Mr. Stamp hasn't paid him any interest. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, mis- I'm not Mr. Stamp, but I'll role play. Does that help? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I got some grooming stories that would put hair on your cuckles. Oh, um, I won't go into that. Uh, Shelby, I've just, sorry, just caught a glimpse of a future comment that I've got, oh, he's great. Uh, Shelby, Shelbers. if you were a biscuit, which one would you be and why? Café Noir, mysterious. Oh. And hard, mysterious and hard. Yeah. And unavailable. Hard to find. Uh, no, reality, ugh. Um, probably Gary Baldy, because no one ever thinks of me. Oh mate, I'd be the I'd be the Hovis digestive because I'm quite uncommon, uh, largely disappointing, but best served with butter. <laughs> Basically uh, crackers. I'd be the ginger nut because I'm, oh. not, I'm I'm northern hard and unpalatable. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon, have you ever thought what type of biscuit you'd be? Um, probably Garibaldi. <laughs> <laughs> what do you work for them? <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to break into the American coach. <laughs> with, with some biscuits. Well, I'd be a Garibaldi because I like them, but I don't know many other people who do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think certainly three people on this podcast do. Oh, oh. guys. Maddie Madworld says... Madis. Mad- Madison. I don't know. Any- what, I don't know. What is... Ma- what? Madders, yeah. Madders. Yeah, Madders. Yeah, it, it's, it it's, it's the first syllable of the name with ers 
afterwards. That's how it works, Nathan. That's how the nickname thing works that we've been doing. What was it? But what's her first? What is her actual username? Maddie Madworld. Yeah, Maddie oh, Mad Maddie. World. Her name is. Yeah. Maddie. Oh, that's why I was getting confused. Sorry. Where are all these comments coming from, by the way? Is this on Facebook? <laughs> Michael makes them up. <laughs> <laughs> Primarily Instagram. This one. We um yeah every every two like just before the show airs uh, sort of records we we put up a post on Instagram to say this is our next guest and this is the topic so submit some questions um so yeah you can find it on on Instagram we did I think we tagged you but I don't know if you're much of an Instagrammer I I'm so old I don't know Instagram <laughs> <laughs> hush uh, no Maddie Madworld Ooh. says any chocolate biscuit yum yum. Um, faces of MJ says, if I made a picture of your face using biscuits, which should I use? Um, for me, I think you'd need a combination of rich tea and hobnob. <laughs> oh, and I suppose you'd need a Oreo for the hair. Well, it's a bit black right, well. for your hair. What's, what's, what's a really, what's a really grey biscuit? You, you'd, no, you'd, 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 white cream. you'd mix it in, Stuart. You'd mix them in, you'd crush it all up so it formed a grey. Yeah. Don't, don't you guys nick that as if, like, it's, oh, no, look how smart we are. We thought about the white bit. I already thought about the white bit. We were talking earlier about how grey my hair is. Don't need to... What would the, what would the hobnob be? The olive tones in my skin. <laughs> <laughs> Just shading. Um, Frankie Funko. Frankers. Someone once told... Frankers. Uh, someone once told me that Maltesers and Kit Kats are biscuits, <laughs> to which I then stabbed them in the legs, <laughs> s- sliced off their nipples, put their hands in bleach, and then knitted their lips shut. Did I overreact, or is this how we should continue to silence such bollocks? I think I think that that's an, an entirely appropriate reaction for anyone that says that uh, Maltesers are a biscuit. I think it's a slight overreaction for Kit Kat. Slight, yeah, that's, slight. That's, that's that's tough because if we, if we're going to suggest that pink wafer is a biscuit, it, if if that does form a biscuit, then then Kit Kat surely has an argument. Yeah, but Maltese, no, no, no. I mean, I don't... I mean, we've got we've got one of the world's foremost experts on Maltesers on the podcast tonight. <laughs> Where's, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> the, the interesting thing there, I think, is that could you say complete encapsulation with chocolate therefore means it's a chocolate bar? Because in which case, that knackers your uh, Fox's classic. It mm-hmm. does. Mm. Yeah, so I don't... Uh, I really don't know what to classify what I... Well, I suppose I call them biscuit bars. Uh, yeah. Carry on. I think, I yeah, think you're biscuit. absolutely right. Biscuit bars. <laughs> yeah. in, in, individually wrapped biscuit bars. Yeah, that's... Per, per, thank yeah. you, perfect. IWBBs, yeah. 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 Shelby's back in there. Shelbers. Shelbers. Dropping in. Which biscuit do you think has the longest staying power when dunking? I think we sort of discussed that. Yeah, we 100%. Olish, Olish Plinsky. Oli. What is more savoury, a piece of Airwaves menthol gum or a Maryland <laughs> biscuit? I think it should be a trivial question, to be honest. <laughs> Clearly, clearly the 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 uh, one that gone? I said last time. Oh, it's gone. Oh, it's gone. Jan, more savory. Jan, what do you think of to that? Actually, what's uh, what's more savoury, a piece of Airwaves gum mm. or a Maryland biscuit cookie? I'm gonna go Airwaves gum. Thank you. It, it's more savoury. I could sort of imagine oh. that in a sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Uh, well, anyway, like I say, don't don't answer any of my questions anymore. Uh, the Geordie Lion says, George. I know I'm probably too late, but love a chunky jive and all love a knockoff biscuits from Aldi. Yeah. Oh, again, that's sort it's... of knocking on the, are they biscuits? Olish Plinsky says, never too late, mate. Um, the Geordie Lion, best cookies, Subway, Millie's or the cookie mill? <laughs> different, um, different. I, I've never had... Never had Millie's, but definitely Cookie Mill. Uh, Cookie Mill, closely followed by Subway, distantly followed by Millie's. Different cookies I, for different needs. I, I don't. I don't find any of those cookies appetising in any way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say that Millie's have absolutely tanked in quality in the last several years. Uh, the Geordie Lion. This is the one Close. that made me laugh earlier when I caught it. 
Geordie Lyon says, MJ, when we rob in this casino. <laughs> <laughs> when? Just to clarify to any um, law, 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 law making uh, police listening, um, that is not something we've discussed. It was maybe floated initially in some private messages, but it was very much sort of a, are you up for this? Yes, I am sort of conversation. It wasn't any kind of concrete plan. Um, Amelia Hills. Amelia. Not sure if I'm the only one, but I have a cup of tea and a biscuit simply because I am British and bored. Also, can we have a moment of silence for all those biscuits who fell into tea and became disgusting sludge? Correct. The Geordie Lion. Love them lotus ones and turn weird ones that sound Polish. Is that the Choco Liebnis? Or Jasiki. Oh, Jasiki. Yeah, they're they're tremendous. They are, they are. Uh, well, love them ones? with gravy, Jesse and Fester style. Yeah. What are the ones that you get wrapped up with a cup of coffee at the end of a meal? Biscoff, lotus biscoff, Caramel, lotus caramel bits. caramelized mm. sugar biscuit. Yeah, nice biscuit. Yeah, not mentioned them apart from saying them at the start. Obviously, they're one of the best by far. They've, it's been a cultural phenomenon. Is is this not? They do that as like the sort of Nutella like paste now, don't they? Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. Is it speculus? Speculus. speculus. It, it is a type of speculus. Yeah. <laughs> it's a type of speculus. <laughs> what it? What it is? Not all um, lotus are speculus. Sorry, all lotus are speculus, but not all speculus are lotus. Correct. Sure that raises, not all vacuums are hoovers. That raises the question. That if if you can just effectively blend up a uh, biscuit and create a paste, what would other pasted biscuits taste like? Well, well, don't even need to. You don't even need to ponder because a few years ago, several years ago, Tesco did this exact thing, um, and I implore everyone on listening to this if you've not seen our videos, go and check them out. We did, a, or rather, they did, and we did reviews of. Bourbon biscuit spread, custard cream spread, and there was one or two others. They did a cookie spread and a few, but the so I'm not a massive fan of custard creams nor bourbons, no. but the bourbon spread and the custard cream spread were both absolutely phenomenal. Really, they were. I couldn't even believe it. They were, they were so good. I mean, the way that I'm imagining it, it would be like. I blurringly sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> so what could you do? Could you then, like, spread a bit of that on a bourbon? Uh, yeah, Ooh. 100%. Because it, it wasn't a million miles away. From, uh, Penguin used to do a product called Penguin Flipper Dippers, and they were small chocolate biscuits, just, mm. just plain biscuits with a little dipping thing so it wasn't a million miles away from the dipping thing and that and just mm-hmm. man it i can't believe they got rid of him because they were they were on to something they were big time on something they were and I, I do believe that everyone who tried them loved them um I was, I, everyone I, I, every single person a 100 percent of people now um, you know, the, the question it. keeps going around what are you going to do when lockdown ends i've not really had a satisfying answer before now but now i think hunting down a tub of bourbon goo is my answer that's what i'm going to do when the pandemic ends hunt down a I tub of they... bourbon goo and spread it on a custard cream to make it palatable <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to get some oil in a blender i think because they don't do it anymore but you, i reckon you could easily make it do you think it's so... just literally oil and I believe I say in the video reviews what is in it, but yeah, I think it was. They definitely contained actual biscuits, like it wasn't a gimmick or anything. Mm. They they both definitely. I think they were oil, probably stabilizers, and yeah, biscuits. I'll rewatch the vids and uh, have a little look. Mm. We've all got some xanthan gum in the back of our cupboards. So <laughs> it's not xanthan gum is not hard to find. You just <laughs> extract it from an airwaves gum. <laughs> <laughs> nah, too savoury for me. Um, Aaron Cunliffe says, in your professional opinion, MJ, <laughs> embarrassed to be singled out, but which biscuit would you say best complements a Foster's Radler? Um, I'd, I'd, I'd consider a lemon puff. 
<laughs> I mean, it's certainly fitting, isn't it? Um, something OT maybe to go with the with the with the hops with the yeah. yeah. What would a biscuit sommelier be called then? Oh, a what's that? Sorry, a, what would a biscuit sommelier be? What's a sommelier? So uh, sommelier is the one who recommends the wine in a restaurant. Yeah. Oh wow! So so, so are you um just to clarify? Would this be somebody who would recommend a biscuit to go with your drink, or the other way around, a drink to go with your biscuit? Um, I think either or. I think sommeliers can do it that way. So they can say, you could say, oh, I really, really fancy having that light, crisp Chardonnay. And they'd go, great, why don't you have the fish? <laughs> um, That's what they would <laughs> but, but, but biscuit, maybe, I guess. Yeah. It's a bit obvious, but biscona, sir. Oh. A hobnob. Just to play uh, into, into the fact that they're quite posh. Um, <laughs> yeah. I no, I no, no, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what else on that. That's the end of my. That's the end of the uh, social media so Oh, which is perfectly time for Stuart to come back into the room. I don't know if he can hear me talking. I'm just going to fill some time until he gets. Yes, he's got his headphones back on. Welcome back, Stuart. Hello, Nathan. Uh, we, we've uh, a question to you. I think you missed it while you were out of the room. What would a biscuit-themed sommelier be called? So, someone who recommended you a drink or a biscuit, depending on which route you were going. Best, best we've got is a biscona, sir. A biscuitier. A biscuitier. Biscuitier is good. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm fuming. I can't think of anything intellectual to, to add to this conversation because, I, as you know, I love wordplay. I love puns, and I cannot think of anything that is worth adding to this. What I need is a list, a list of synonyms for biscuit. Yeah, but we're not going to do that, Stuart. What we're going to do is we're going to slowly transition into a lovely game of sweeter or savourer. It's time to play a game. Oh, is that what we're doing now? Good job. Good. Yeah, mate. Sock mate's done, mate. It's dead. Correct. It's right. Given. Uh, right, Sean. Um, we're going to play a game. What What I have in my hand is a is a flat cap, um, a delightfully northern flat cap, and in the, in the delightfully northern flat cap are uh, the names of various uh, food and drink products, some of which are branded products, some of which are tremendously generic products. And uh, all you've got to do is predict whether the next product will be a sweeter product or a savourier product. Um, it's very, very, very straightforward indeed, but much harder than it seems. Uh, yeah. I, sh- I shall give you your first product, and then you shall use your your skills as a sorcerer to divine whether the whether mm-hmm. the, the, the following product will be a sweeter or a savourier product. The first product that we've got, and it's the fourth time out of the hat, it's a Hawaiian pizza which is a savory product but a, pro- a savory product with a tremendous sweetness to it will the with, next product yeah. be a sweeter product or a savourier product uh, it'll be sweeter it'll be a sweeter product than a hawaiian pizza we, we will, I, watched, we, I watched this podcast earlier it's sweeter we will remove <laughs> we will remove from the heart a cheeseburger and we shall call it a day that very Second step, which is as bad as it is possible to be at this. I just game. gambled my mortgage payment on that. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't. Hang on a second. I don't know if you have cheeseburgers the same as I do, but most of the cheeseburgers I have um, are just are just coated in speculoos. <laughs> What what I've I have, on on the cheeseburger, I've I've, I've dabbled in unusual cheeseburger toppings. Um, in, in, essentially, in in a way to get peanut butter onto onto cheeseburgers, <laughs> <laughs> that is I've dabbled in. And one of the things that I have I have placed on a cheeseburger, uh, I say on a cheeseburger, I think I removed the cheese, but is a uh, like a chili jam. No, no, was that a, vo- a vomiting noise then? Yeah, I, I had to gip. Sorry. So 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 the 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 concept of a, a nice toasted brioche bun. A beef patty, or a or a or a meat free patty, if that is you, if that is your wish, as it is my wish. Um, some p- 
peanut butter, a very dry peanut butter, such as Morrison's own branded 100% nut peanut butter, and a and a chili jam. Does that not? Does that not? When when did brioche buns for a burger become a thing? That's going to be one of those things that we look back on, like Black Forest Gatto, and go, what? <laughs> Oh, I've got I've got some issues. I was with you for a second because I don't actually think that a brioche with a burger is the best thing. It's it, it can be very suitable, but it's floury not. bap, floury bap. Yeah, I do generally prefer white, like non enriched bread. Just I two bits ge- of bread. I do generally prefer that. <laughs> yeah, Get two it. slices of 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 King's Mill. <laughs> thin, thin, not even thick. <laughs> I couple think of, a couple done of rich teas. <laughs> When Claire's put the old, uh, when Claire's put a two litre sparkling water uh, on top of the buns and they've flattened oh. out. Think of, nah. Claire! Oh, no, you oh, ruined the burger buns, Claire! <laughs> Good. Oh, the put, air's gone. You put, the air is what keeps the flavour in. You've put your hydration on top of me bloody burger buns and now there's no volume. It's been a while, in it? So. You guys done with that? Or... <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. I think well, it'll be... Hey, time to wrap this up, isn't it? <laughs> um, Can I just ask for um, a judge's uh, inquiry or a steward's inquiry on if Hawaiian pizza... If you're talking brioche bun, then I'm going to argue that that's sweeter than a Hawaiian pizza. Oh, I, 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 I would think that in this game of Sweet or Saviour that uh, it probably wasn't a brioche bun. I oh, would imagine it was no, just a, a cheeseburger. I think, I think, yeah, I think Stuart was more talking about his personal want when it comes yeah. to uh, a cheeseburger. But in this, well, I'd, in this I'd, instance, I'd be happy game... to, I'd be happy to argue it anyway. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think, I don't think a, a brioche bun is sweeter than pineapple. Sean forfeited. Sean <laughs> forfeited any um, foot he had in this argument earlier when he said that uh, Maryland is sweeter than uh... S- savoury. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah. No, he was, he was correct. He was correct. And I can't believe that this has been dragged up yet again. <laughs> wow. Two, it's been nearly two years. I think it was about three years ago, actually, that we first fell out with our close friends about this. That yeah. was a day. I yeah. loved that. That was good fun. Uh, Just don't hopefully. be wrong when we won't have a problem this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's pretty much all we've got. Shan, it has been a... It's been a pleasure. It's been an education. <laughs> <laughs> For me. What have you learned tonight? You've learned MJ's never tried smegma. You've learned... Um... I never explicitly made that clear. I <laughs> <laughs> um, never... Uh, you know, I think one of the things, great things about the internet is that there's there's people talking passionately and, uh, you know, in depth about all manner of topics. And I, I never really thought food was, you know, mass market food was one of them. So I, you've opened my eyes and I will surely shut them again. I think the good thing is we... we, we... We we talked about this podcast um, and we we realised that there was a bit of a niche in the market for a a a, a comedy based food um, related podcast and you do the comedy what? late. Yeah. <laughs> the good news is we we opened the door and uh, Ed Gamble and James Acaster just uh, smashed it through and just stole all of our thunder about a year after we did. No, I'm not bitter. What one little bit? Um, Piff. But, um, you know, <laughs> Um, no, it, Shannon, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for coming on. Um, Thanks for having me. Genuinely. No, please, please remind uh, our listeners of your book and where they can find said said thing. So it's called Before and After. It's out now. It's five star rated on Amazon. I don't like to, you know, push that too much. But uh, <laughs> if you go to helpbiscuits.com, you'll find it. Uh, and you definitely will get a recommendation. I, I am very much one of the five star camp that um, that, that five starred your camp, so to speak. Um, <laughs> no, please, please read it. It's uh, it's a great read to reiterate what I said earlier. And uh, I know that Stuart will be picking up shortly. Correct. Wonderful. Correct. Let me know what you think. Yeah, we'll do, mum. Yeah, I'm a, I, I, I'm very very much looking forward to it. Um, f- big big fan of any kind of. Uh, post-apocalyptic literature and yeah. and as a um, 
as a larger man in an in an apocalypse world. I think it's. Uh, but I, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna treat it as essentially a manual. So <laughs> uh, at the at the sorry. At the it, moment, Emmanuel, I need to. The... I need, yeah, Emmanuel. I'm gonna, Emmanuel, <laughs> so Emmanuel Two was probably the best, if anything. I'm going to treat. I'm going to treat it as a, a manual. So before I read it, I'm going to. I'm going to more than double my body weight, um, <laughs> so that I can really do take it literally. It's sad, sadly, I say more than double, just actually double, because I'm probably touching three hundred pounds at the moment. Uh, although I did go for a run today, so that's you know that's good. Isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, enjoy. And thanks very much for having me. Thank no, absolutely. Thank and uh, no, it's been a pleasure. Um, MJ Stewart, thank you very much for um, being here. Thank, thank no. you, Nathan. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Oh, well, I, d- I didn't realise we had a choice. So <laughs> I, I, I thought I thought part of the deal was that we got to use the Fruck name, but we we can have Stewart. Good news. I've got some good news for you, Stuart. <laughs> Things have come to light, and uh, I think I need to share. No, uh, thank you very much. It's been it's been a pleasure. We've we've said some funny things on tonight's episode. I can't remember any of them. Um, hopefully, the people at home listening will remember them forever, and we'll get them tattooed. I'd love, Joe. You know what I would love somebody to go out there and get a tattoo of a frock on their body. I made a well. We got that offer from those people. I need to get back to them. Really. Sorry, I'll rephrase that. Someone had a, a willing choice over getting uh. a frock tattooed on their body. Well, speaking of the funny things, that oh, like a few minutes ago, I made a really clever and witty piff joke, and I hope people were. Pre- I, hope I people heard it. Really I laughed. laughed. I laughed. Yeah, you laughed a lot. Yeah, I think yeah. you fully understood it and was like, "Yeah, yeah. that was incredibly witty, incredibly yeah. funny." And I, I hope when people listen back, I hope yeah. they fondly. Re- I think that'll be the main thing that I'll take. You're going to send, you're gonna send all the listeners a WhatsApp message as well, just to point out your joke, like you did to me. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much for the listeners for joining us hope you've enjoyed this show we'll be back in two weeks where i think we'll have alex on the show but i'm not 100 percent certain oh. but if i think so i think i see we've got next on excellent excellent yeah he's good value he's in like alex. yes yeah uh yeah see you later and stay safe stay healthy love to you all and something 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 think of something intelligent and pretend i said it bye <laughs> bye everyone bye